UJT stands for Unijunction Transistor. This is one of the most important devices that can never be ignored. This is a three-terminal semiconductor device. The main characteristics in UJT is where it is triggered, the emitter current increases, regenerating until it is limited by emitter power supply. Due to this characteristics feature, it is used in applications like switching pulse generator, sawtooth wave generator among others. UJT construction Consist of an n-type silicon semiconductor bar with an electrical terminals on each end. The terminals of these connections are called base terminals, B1 and B2. Near to base B2, a PN junction is formed between a P-type emitter terminal E. Since the device has three terminals and one PN junction, for the region this is called a unijunction transistor. The device has only PN junction, so it forms a diode. Because the two base leads are taken from section of the diode, hence the device is also called double base diode. Emitter is heavily doped, while the n-type is lightly doped. Thus, the resistance between base terminals is very high when emitter terminal is open. Operation of UJT When emitter is forward biased, it allows for current flow in the circuit, while when the emitter is reversed biased, current does not flow. Under forward bias the holes from positive emitter moves towards the n-type, this facilitate current flow due to small or no depletion region. While under reverse bias electrons from the battery flow in reverse direction, hence facilitating the holes to move towards the emitter, hence a large depletion region is formed between the n-type, hence facilitating the blockage of flow of current. Further, with emitter open, when voltage VBB is applied with emitter open, a potential gradient is established along the n-type silicon bar. As the emitter is located close to the base B2, thus a major part of VBB appears between the emitter and base B1. The voltage V1 between emitter and B1 establishes a reverse bias on the PN junction. And the emitter current is cut off, but a small leakage current flows from B2 to emitter due to minority charge carriers. Thus, the device is said to be in off state with emitter at positive potential. When a positive voltage is applied at the emitter terminal, the PN junction will remain reverse biased till the input voltage is less than V1. As soon as the input voltage at the emitter exceeds V1, the PN junction becomes forward biased. Under this condition, holes are supplied from P-type region into the N-type bar. These holes are repelled by positive B2 terminal and attracted towards the B1 terminal. This increase in the number of holes in the emitter to B1 region results in the decrease of resistance of this section of the bar. Because of this, the internal voltage drop from emitter to B1 region is reduced. Thus the emitter current IE increases. As more holes are supplied, a condition of saturation is reached. At the point of saturation, the emitter current is limited by emitter power supply. Now, the device is conducting, hence is said to be in on state. Equivalent circuit. The resistance of silicon bar is called the interbase resistance, has a value from 4 kilo ohms to 10 kilo ohms. The resistance RB1 is the resistance of the bar between emitter and base region. The value of this is variable and depends upon the bias voltage across the PN junction. The resistance RB2 is the resistance of the bar between emitter and B2 region. The emitter PN junction is represented by a diode. With no voltage applied to the UJT, the value of interbase resistance is given by RBB equals to RB1 plus RB2. The intrinsic standoff ratio N of the UJT is given by N equals to V1 over VBB, which equals to RB1 over RB1 plus RB2. The voltage across RB1 is V1. Therefore, V1 equals to RB1 over RB1 plus RB2 times VBB, which is equal to NVBB. The value of N generally lies between 0.51 and 0.82. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did kindly subscribe, like and share. See you in the next one.